Well, the treatment for pulmonary fibrosis is quite varied. It does depend on the type of pulmonary fibrosis that a person has. So if a person has what is called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, this means that there is absolutely no reason known why a person develops a pulmonary fibrosis uh, type of disease. If that occurs, we have two drugs on the market. One is called um, nintetinib and the other is called perfenidone. Their easier names are OFEV, which is nintetinib, and perfenidone is esbriate. So these are drugs that are meant just for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, but no other type of pulmonary fibrosis. If the pulmonary fibrosis is due to a sort of an allergic response to an outside antigen or protein or molecule, then the first step, of course, is to remove the individual from that exposure or get rid of the exposure. It may sound easy to do, but often it is detective work to even find out what's causing the pulmonary fibrosis and the response in the lungs, and then to find measures to get rid of that particular substance. So it's not that easy. And if that is the case, mo most of us start with removing the inciting agent, and if we can't do that or find th the reason why the person has the pulmonary fibrosis and the individual is quite ill, with the pulmonary fibrosis, then we will start something called prednisone. This is an immunosuppressive agent that is used for the short term. So if the disorder continues to get worse, then we substitute the prednisone with a little bit better, less side effects uh, with mycophenolate. Uh, that's one option. So these are really the only two uh, big agents that we use for that particular type of pulmonary fibrosis. If the pulmonary fibrosis is from what we call an autoimmune disorder, and some examples of autoimmune disorders are like rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, lupus, then again, depending on how bad the situation is, we start out with the prednisone and then we substitute either mycophenolate or azothioprine so that we don't have the individual with lots of side effects that prednisone gives. Then if the fibrosis is from something that um, was uh, an occupational uh, exposure, the, uh, the exposure is gone, then we assume that the changes will not progress and there is no real treatment. Other types of treatment are with supportive measures such as oxygen, making sure the person has good oxygenation at all times and we try to target 88 percent and higher in saturation, make sure that the individual is fit and well conditioned, um, weight being at the ideal body weight as best as the person can imagine, make sure that your vaccinations are up to date and then People don't have just pulmonary fibrosis, they have other disorders as well like hypertension or heart disease, so it's important to treat those as well. And again, recognizing that pulmonary fibrosis has very minimal treatment available, and if we want to improve the quality of life and prolong life, then the physician who is looking after a person with pulmonary fibrosis also has to be responsible or take charge of managing those other problems as well, usually in conjunction with another specialist, such as a cardiologist if it's heart disease or endocrinologist if it's bad diabetes. Well, currently we are a little bit um, dumbfounded by what the exact cause of what we call exacerbations, which is a flare of the disease. So. Often, depending on the type of pulmonary fibrosis a person has, the flare is really dependent on what, what type they have. So for example, if it's idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis where we don't know what the cause is, then a flare often occurs when an individual is totally innocent bystander. They haven't done anything bad, wrong, or indifferent. It just happens. So that we can't avoid. But other flares can occur we assume from developing infection, so of course vaccination is a good idea. It may be a good idea to have a backup antibiotic available at home, so to start the antibiotic at the first sign of changes in the lungs, such as a cough or phlegm or change in color of the phlegm or high fever. Nonetheless, even if you do start something, you must contact your family physician or your chest or lung doctor as well. Then another thing that we can avoid, as I was mentioning, is uh, simple things. So avoiding possibly getting bad heartburn or reflux. 
I think that reflux has been associated with a number of um, individuals who have had flares. So you can imagine that what happens with reflux is that you get acid from the stomach going into the lungs and the acid is irritating. If your lungs are normal, it's still irritating, but if they're abnormal, it's more so. So that's another area we try to uh, control with treatment and make sure that the individual is on anti-reflux therapy. Usually this involves uh, medications that are called proton pump inhibitors, sometimes just over-the-counter antacids, and a variety of other management um, strategies. Well, again, the side effects depend on the type of medication that the individual is taking. So say, for example, it's um, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and the individual is either on perfenidone, which is esbriet, or nintetinib, which is ofeb. The side effects are basically the same for both of these medications, which is upset stomach, feeling kind of blah, nausea. Um, there can be vomiting. But with perfenidone or esbriet, there is a higher tendency to get rashes, in particular have a solar sensitivity, which means that the sun is not your best friend and you might get a very bad rash under the sun. So clearly wearing sunscreen, a hat, and usually the recommendation is to have a sunscreen that's greater than 35, somewhere around 50 SPF, and avoidance of the sun as well. So when an individual gets the nausea part of it, the poor appetite and feeling blah, the only thing that we can do is to reduce the dose and see if that helps, or to, and definitely take the medication with a meal. That seems to help the upset stomach. With nintetinib, which is OFEB, as I indicated, a lot of these side effects are similar to perfenidone or esbriet, but nintetinib or OFEB has a tendency to give people loose bowel movements. And with the loose bowel movements, the uh, medication itself comes with a kit that includes a medication to slow down bowel movements. It's called Lomotil. So the individual is free to take that particular medication. If that doesn't work, then um, we can reduce the dosage to um, the second level of dosing, which is 100 milligrams twice a day. The initial dosing is 150 milligrams twice a day. So those are some of the uh, strategies. Both of these medications can irritate the liver so that uh, we make sure that a person gets a blood test done uh, with a liver test on it at least once per month initially and eventually when we see that nothing bad has happened to their liver, we are a little bit more liberal and do the blood testing maybe every other month or every three months. So comorbid means that there is another illness that is present along with the pulmonary fibrosis. Well, that makes sense. I mean, people have more than one thing wrong with them. And if that is the case, then it is best to treat both disorders. So the most common comorbidities are what people get in the population anyways. So you don't get to be special because you have pulmonary fibrosis. You're like everyone else. So the most common things in the community amongst our neighbors and friends are pulmonary, uh, are hypertension, uh, cardiac disease with coronary artery disease or angina, heart failure, um, rhythm disturbances of the heart, valve disturbances of the heart, and then of course there's diabetes. Uh, other things such as gastroesophageal reflux disease uh, is common. Uh, people get depression, anxiety. So these are some of the highlights of other disorders that can be present. So each of those disorders requires a certain type of treatment, and sometimes the disorders are quite complicated, so it's not really up to the respirologist or the lung doctor to be able to look after them. So for example, if a person has bad heart failure, the likelihood is high that we will be involving a cardiologist to help out. So treatment of comorbidities is really highly dependent on what the individual has. So the best thing to do is to make sure that there's a long list of all the medical conditions, they're all looked after, and the appropriate uh, other physicians are involved in the team approach.